Hey friends, Clayton Phillips here from Woody's RV World in Leduc, Alberta, Canada. And I am absolutely jacked up, fired up today on this February 18th morning in Leduc, Alberta, Canada. And the reason why is because we have, this is an opportunity for us to debut in Canada on video, the all new Ember Touring Edition. And friends, I've been through a lot of trailers. I've toured most of the manufacturing plants. I've seen the way that RVs have been built over many, many years. I've been in this industry over 20 years. And I am so excited about this particular trailer, friends, because Ember, their company, the way that they are manufacturing their product, they wanted to build a better RV experience for their customers and it starts their belief in building a better RV company with the people, the products they use that go into manufacturing their products. And yes, I'm gonna talk your ear off on this trailer, friends. So I'm just gonna let you know that you're gonna hear my voice. I'm gonna go deep in this particular product because there is just so much to talk about. And I'm absolutely excited to be able to share this with you today. So this particular trailer um, is a 24 BH. Uh, it measures 31 feet 9 inches in length. This is a bunk model. They also build the 24 MBH, which is a really cool concept. So you have you can customize the floor plan two different ways with a set front bed uh, that doesn't fold up or down, just a regular conventional uh, you know, 60 by 80 queen size bed, which is really nice residential size beds they're using. Or you can option in a Murphy bed in the front, which would fold up into the front wall of the trailer and give you a sofa that would be exposed and kind of give you a desk office flex area, which is really, really cool. But one of the things you'll note right away just from the video is that the profile is a little different on this trailer. If you've watched some of the Overland, Ember Overland videos, uh, you're going to see some consistencies. Uh, Ember has a DNA that they're staying true to, where a lot of manufacturers don't as they you know, migrate between brands. A lot of the, the beliefs and the quality and the products they use change. Uh, Ember is sticking to a DNA uh, in the products that they're building, which is really, really cool. So we're going to jump into it right up front. Uh, first and foremost, foremost, you're going to see right up front here, the front jack on this is the Lippert Smart Jack. This has got a little extra technology built into it. It has an auto return feature, so you push a series of buttons, one, two, three, hold on the third for a couple seconds, and that jack will uh, lower the front end of the trailer without sitting, having to sit there and hold a button. Makes just hooking and unhooking so much easier. Also, you've got your Versa coupler right here on the front of the trailer. There are a lot of things uh, that make this really, really nice. One, it's a theft uh, deterrent thing. So if you're parking your trailer for any amount of time, you can literally unbolt these two uh, bolts here and remove your coupler. So you don't have to worry about somebody backing up and hooking onto your trailer and stealing it. But the other added benefit, similar to the Overland, is it gives you flexibility. So you're not having to spend, if you've got a jacked up truck, you're not having to spend an extra couple hundred dollars to get a, a longer drop shank. You can literally adjust the coupler up or down, uh, depending on the tow vehicle making, you know, hooking up and unhooking that much easier. Um, the other thing that we've done is we've optioned in this really Really, yes, I'm going to say whiz bang, uh, propane tank cover slash battery compartment slash tool tray. Um, Ember's done such an amazing job. Again, I'm big on uh, trying to push the button here, get this thing to pop up. Oh, here we go. There we go. Sorry about that. So, yeah, the tray lifts up. There's a stu uh, tool tray here for whatever you want tools, um, blocks if you will. Um, again, Ember, I was going to say, is the value added company. They're not looking at the price as one of the first indicators of whether or not it's something they're going to put on their trailer. They, whenever they look at an item that they're thinking of putting into a trailer, from my perspective, they're looking at it as how can we enhance the customer's ownership RV ownership experience. Will this add value to the life that you're gonna have of the trailer when you spend the money on it? And is it something that you're probably gonna add anyway? Um, again, really cool item. 
This just flips forward. They are 20 pound propane tanks. You do get the battery tray here. This pops right off. So you can slide a couple of six volt batteries there as well. It's properly vented. All the wiring is there. So this is an option. Standard is just your typical plastic drop down propane tank cover that you know can fade over time the lids get stolen or they fly off or what have you they work well they, they serve a purpose but this is value added at its finest uh, which is really really nice properly sealed with a bulb seal going around again a lot of thought has gone into this um, particular item okay standing back again right on the front here a slight departure from the full exoskeleton that you would get on their overland series this is um again it does have an exoskeleton but going more robust than what you would typically see in the rv industry you've got this massive steel plate coming down the side on both sides of the trailer again this will help put a, a hull lock on the trailer reducing the amount of deflection and twisting that you get in RVs. Also, the corner moldings that they use are far thicker, a heavier gauge than your thin little aluminum corner moldings that you find. Again, you've got your Ember-inspired branded um, exoskeleton up there, and then they put the laser-cut grooves in along the edge here. Again, locking in the trailer, which is really, really cool. Again, they're, they're thinking of not just when you're camping, parked, and set up, they're thinking of your towing experience as well. Even the profile of the front of the trailer is more aerodynamic than what you might find in some other trailers. But again, Grand, or, um, um, Ember going the extra step. Uh, they're doing that Mylar tape seal on the backside of all the corner moldings, doing a silicone cap seal as well. The other really neat thing about this particular product, friends, it's a composite built trailer. So there's a lot of composite materials that go into it. It's not just your main wall that you find with a lot of other products. You know, you hear of Asdale, 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 got to have Asdale. Well, one thing you got to be aware of is that a lot of manufacturers only put Asdale in their main sidewall. And often you may only find the Asdale on the exterior. They're still doing that Luon plywood on the interior. Uh, or they'll do a, a laminated floor with Luon in it, but they'll say they have Asdale on their sidewall. So I get a little bit confused on those things as to what they're really, what their values are. Ember, their values are, if we can put a composite product into it, they're gonna do it. And so all of your interior wall paneling that I'll show you inside is all composite. Asdale, they're using a far thicker gauge product as well, which is really nice, more rigidity. Um, the outer wall, your front wall, your slide walls, um, rear wall are all true composite. So fully bead welded, aluminum tubing. You've got the Asdale interior, exterior. Uh, fully laminated together and then your floor in this particular product again where a lot of manufacturers they'll tout Asdale but they don't do Asdale in their floor why because if you just use Asdale by itself it doesn't have a ton of screw retention especially for a floor where you need to have screw retention Ember has put in their Evermore floor um, I tried to get the name from Chris Barth their VP he is one of their product designers uh, he was really holding that card real tight to his chest, but the floor in this particular product is fully laminated. There's Asdale in it, but then they also have this layer of, I don't know what it is. He said space age woven glass fabric, something. Uh, again, he wouldn't share it with me that gives them unbelievable screw retention and a lot of rigidity in the floor. So I know I'm spending a lot of time on this friends, but this is where the value is. They're not just bolting it on, like some manufacturers, these guys are bolting on the value, but they're building the value in. This is a generational trailer. They want this trailer to last so that if you want to pass it off to some family members as the years go by, the trailer's going to hold up. You're not going to be passing off something that isn't going to stand the test of time. So really, really cool product. Uh, one thing to note, Industry exclusive, you'll only find on an Ember trailer. This light here is tied to a sensor at the back corner, and I'll show you that when I get to the back. But this is Lane Change Assist, CUB, Cub. Um, this particular product, when you are traveling down the highway and you have the Cub system activated, friends, it will pick up a vehicle beside you. It eliminates the blind spots that you can have in, tra in trailering, especially when you're towing the trailer at night. I talked to the driver, he dropped off a 26RB to us the other day, 
and he said he absolutely loves the lane change assist because he does a lot of driving at night uh, when there's less traffic. Uh, but with that often comes reduced visibility and those amber lights that turn on uh, really help him, give him confidence as he's towing down the highway to know that, hey, if that light's on, there's somebody there, even if he can't see the lights of the vehicle. Uh, so really, really cool uh, that Ember is the only manufacturer that has that product on their trailers currently. So we're going to jump into the front storage compartment here. Um, again, they went after the drop frame chassis, which does add weight, it does add cost, but you have an unbelievable pass-through storage compartment. Now they've one-upped everybody else uh, in the industry. They've got dual lights, so strip LED lighting here. There's a motion sensor lighting in here as well. All of these paneling, all this paneling, friends, is all composite material in here, aluminum framed. What do they do? They finish it off. You can't see it like they're going the extra step to finish things off, which is really, really nice. This is your 30 amp MPPT solar remote. Uh, the charge controller is right up there beside your 2000 watt inverter. So silver box, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, that's optional. That comes with the off grid package. And beside it, that box right there is your 30 amp go power MPPT charge controller that's tied to your two, two 200 watt solar panels so on the roof of this trailer we've optioned out uh, as part of their off-grid package 400 watts of solar 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter great for electronics it'll run your outdoor fridge at your outdoor kitchen which is really nice comes with the trailer we're optioning it out on all of the trailers here at our Leduc dealership so beautiful beautiful storage compartment even the decking that they're using friends is much thicker it's heavier gauge less chance of tearing uh, it's not going to stain it's not going to absorb smells and odors and those sorts of things it's going to lay flat for the lifetime of the trailer unlike the vinyl that we find in some of the trailers that over time can start to ripple or tear exposing a wood floor remember there's no wood in the floor of this trailer at all which is really really cool so they opted for a side swing baggage door, but steel latches, not plastic, double latches. So you have a, it's properly secured. I mean, this is a super thick, heavy door. Um, really going the extra step, building that quality, building that value in. I wanna talk about winterization a little bit on this particular trailer. Now the Ember Touring Edition, standard. This is how they come. There's no options for this. This is how they're building it in. So you've got your forced air furnace. What's really neat about the forced air furnace, on the back of the furnace, there's five ports that you can attach duct, attach duct work to. From what Chris shared with me at the RV show that we just recently went through, each duct that Ember attaches to the back of your furnace goes directly to a vent or a, a vent exhaust vent inside the trailer. There's no T's off of it, so you get reduced airflow. It is full airflow to that duct, one run, which is beautiful. So the way Ember does it is you've got three of the ports on the back of the furnace, one to the front of the trailer, one to the main cabin of the trailer, and then one to the rear of the trailer, potentially a bathroom, bunk area, or what have you. The other two ducts remaining, they actually run a duct from to the front underbelly of the trailer, and to the rear underbelly of the trailer. So you get better heat distribution through the underbelly of your trailer. A lot of manufacturers still friends are using that radiant heat off of a heat plenum where they cut a massive groove in your floor and punch holes in your floor for heat ducts uh, that you can you know, fill up with dirt and debris and catch a toe on and all those things that we talk about. Um, there's no heat ducts in the floor of this trailer whatsoever. So better heat distribution when your furnace is running, but also they put on 12 volt thermostatically controlled heat blankets on the trailer as well. Um, what's really nice about that is the thermostatically controlled heat blankets, you turn the switch on, you set it and forget it. Uh, the, the heat blankets, I may butcher the, the temperatures, so forgive me, this is what I've been told. Uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, they will turn on. They're mounted to the bottom of each of the holding tanks. There's four holding tanks underneath this trailer. On all the touring editions, there's four holding tanks underneath the trailer. Um, two gray, one black, one fresh, with a blanket attached to the bottom side of the tank. And that blanket will heat up to about 67 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it will shut off. 
So what's really nice about that also is when you are actually heating your underbelly, people, well, what if I overheat my water? Well, you'll never really overheat your water off of a furnace and 12 volt heat blanket because it turns off. But having a little bit warmer water in your underbelly, which still to the touch will be cold, will actually make your hot water heater uh, or your water heater more efficient. It's not taking mountain cold water and trying to heat it up, uh, which takes a lot longer to do. If you have water that's a little warmer, uh, it makes your hot water heater or water heater operate more efficiently. So you saw how easy that baggage door closed there. Um, also, cameras, it's pre-prepped for the Furion observation system. So they add the docks to the side cam. So if you wanted to just plug and play side cameras on each of the marker lights up front, you can do it. And then at the rear of the trailer, there is a pre-prep as well for the rear vision uh, camera that you can add if you so choose. Um, I don't typically do a video with the slide in to start, but I wanted to talk about the slide system on this. So um, there's been lots of talk in the industry about slide mechanisms, lots of failures, product changes, manufacturers having to substitute parts and pieces uh, to keep their assembly lines going. We've seen that. We know what's an issue in the industry. I'm going to talk about it because it's a real thing. Um, Ember has chosen to use a different type of slide system. It is a cable slit system, but it's a new cable system. It's got some similarities to another uh, slide mechanism in the industry, um, but this is a dual motor system uh, that runs vertically uh, in the trailer. Um, there's no you know, arms going into the underbelly of the trailer, which allows you to have you know, larger tank capacities and whatnot. It's a very lightweight slide system. It's fully adjustable. You don't need an RV technician to adjust it, which is nice, and manually bringing it in is far easier than some of the others in the industry. Um, and that is called the BAL. It's by Norco, uh, is the manufacturer, and it's the exact slide with some M-Force technology. So I'm showing you this because the slide out, like when you look at this slide, when it sets in, like the seal is tight, tight, tight all the way around because you've got a cable up here, a cable down low and on the other side and it pulls in evenly sealing the full perimeter of the slide out, which is really nice. And the beautiful thing, one of the detriments to a, a cable slide system, friends, is that the cables do stretch in time. So you do have to get them tightened. But the really nice thing, unlike the previous system um, that I still believe is being used because it's less money and manufacturers have gotten used to using it, with this particular system, you can actually adjust and tighten the cables, <clears throat> excuse me, on your own. You don't need to pay a technician to do it. So if you know how to work a wrench, uh, you can cinch up and tighten up those cables uh, on your own without having to spend hundreds of dollars to do it. So beautiful system, beautiful setup. It works really well. I'll show you on the inside when we go in um, what that looks like and, and where the adjustment is. But again, back to the pass-through storage compartment here on the driver's side. This has a uh, enclosed utility center. They wanted to give you a true fifth wheel-like experience in a travel trailer. Again, all powder coated steel in behind here. Your gate valves are in the protected and enclosed underbelly that is fully insulated. Um, again, they don't offer an enclosed utility center and then put all the gate valves underneath. Again, you can do that because it saves money. These guys value add, protected. They're not gonna get covered in dirt and grime and all sorts of stuff. Really nice fifth wheel design that way. The bypass for your hot water heater is here. You can add, there's a prep or a plug-in, plug and play right there. You can add another suitcase style solar panel to your charging if you so choose. And then again, you also have your uh, Nautilus utility panel as well, which again, black tank flush, city water connection, you fill up your fresh water, 55 gallon fresh water capacity through here. Um, you can backfill your fresh water tank. There's a water pump switch here. It makes utilizing the water inside your trailer really easy. The other thing from a winterization perspective, you're not having to pull off a panel on the inside of your trailer to access the back of your hot water heater to get on your side or your head or whatever to turn valves. It's all done right through here. More of a motorhome design, which is really, really cool. So uh, right up in here, you've got your 12 volt uh, tank pad switch, uh, the button to activate your uh, lane change assist, battery disconnect switch. It comes with standard TPMS. It's the tire link system. They provide the box with the module and the sensors that go on the end of the valve stem. So standard comes with TPMS. You can monitor your tire pressure. If you have any issues going down the highway, 
Um, it just makes things a little safer, gives you peace of mind, those sorts of things. So, <clears throat> hot water heater. I stick stuck with the standard hot water heater. I actually get a choice. I can option in the Truma on-demand system. It's only propane on that system. So <clears throat> I opted to go with on the Touring to start. Doesn't mean I won't change it. Uh, we can order one in if you have to have the Truma on-demand system, um, which would give you continuous hot water. I opted to go with the Atwood tank, which is gas and electric, 17.8 gallon quick recovery per hour. Um, with gas and electric on at the same time, but I like the electric function by itself so that if you are at a campground you can and you're able to plug into shore power You just simply turn on the electric portion and that'll maintain the heat in your hot water your water tank hot water tank um, Without burning propane, so it's a thought. It's a theory it, It's what I did on the first batch of orders that we did with this particular product But we can option in the Truma AquaGo system uh, if you so choose so um, also, I know we talked about thermostatically controlled heat blankets. The flooring of this trailer, fully enclosed. The thing I like about it, friends, is you notice there's this, I'll get my hand up in there. See this strip right along here with the screws in it? Okay, some manufacturers have dubbed that, dubbed that rail tight. Um, I really like it because you can see that it actually seals the underbelly far better. It keeps it more secure without gaps and openings uh, where critters can climb in. I shot a quick video. We pulled eight garbage bags of pine cones out from the underbelly of a pre-owned trailer that came in on trade. Because those gaps were there, it was parked underneath a spruce tree. Literally eight bags of pine cones, like huge shop bags. It was unbelievable. The beautiful thing about this trailer, friends, is they seal up everywhere. They put the spray foam in around the openings where plumbing comes out, but that rail tight design keeps it real tight, keeps the heat in, which is nice, uh, and the critters out. Again, to the back side of the Coraplast, that's what they use, that's that corrugated uh, polyethylene material there. It actually has a, a foil insulation bonded to the back side of it. It has reflective quality. So when that heat is pumped down into your underbelly, it's radiating that heat back up inside the underbelly of the trailer, which is nice. So it makes servicing the underbelly really a whole lot easier as well. Full T valve for your fresh water tank right there. It's further down. Let's see if I can get a little closer there. So you just reach under, pull that T valve, and that'll drain the fresh water out of your fresh water tank much easier. Now, um, Grand Design, Overland, independent Kurt trailing arm suspension. They wanted to stay on that similar frame of having independent suspension, so they went with the Dexter torsion axle. If you look under here, friend, I don't know if you see the, the steel beams going across. This is so rigid. The amount of steel that's underneath this trailer is unbelievable. But each tire, each wheel, is on its own independent arm. So creating a smoother ride, right? It's not the leaf springs that can be attached to one another. Um, leaf spring suspension still can create a nice smooth tow. Um, a lot of times it's how the trailer's manufactured on top that makes the difference, but that's what they're using on the Touring Edition, giving you that independent suspension. Again, Dexter, uh, you've got the never adjust brakes, easy lube hubs. Ember went the extra step. This is a fifth wheel size tire. This is a 16 inch 235 um, ST235 ADR 16 tire. Goodyear endurance, it's taller. You got bigger brakes. Um, it's stronger sidewall. It's just, it's gonna run cooler, nitrogen filled. Uh, it's a really, really nice tire that they're putting on here. Typically what you would find on a fifth wheel, they're putting on a travel trailer. So again, going the extra step, hey Ember, if it's good enough for a fifth wheel, why can't we put it in a travel trailer? Who would have thunk, hey? So these particular uh, guys are doing that with this, with this product. Also, I'm really proud of this. A little bit of Canada in this trailer, all right? There's a company out of Manitoba, uh, one of our provinces in Canada called Icon, and they manufacture plastics, polyethylene plastics, ABS. Um, they manufacture the wheel fenders on this trailer beautiful wheel fenders. Often we're going to Icon for wheel fender replacement uh, that manufacturers use. Uh, you know, they go with a cheaper option to save money. Uh, Ember's going directly to Icon. They have a, it's just a stronger, thicker uh, ABS that they're using. Uh, not saying that it won't crack, but 
it is a better material, which is really nice. Also, the holding tanks Icon does as well, and it's a rotocast polyethylene that they're using, not just an ABS tank with a top that's glued on um, that a lot of manufacturers use to save money that can leak or crack. Again, this tr particular tra trailer, friends, is built for all weather use, hot weather, cold weather, and those holding tanks in there are, are a uniform one-piece design with spun fittings. So the attachments that go into the holding tank um, to attach the plumbing fittings and, and stuff to it, if you will, are actually spun in at a high speed, um, properly melding that fitting to the tank. It's not just a hole cut glued in. It's actually high speed spun in and basically melted into the tank, which is really, really cool. Um, not a new technology, but one that's not often used in the RV industry for trailers that, you know, manufacturers are trying to save some money on. These guys go on the extra step, uh, which is really, really nice. I know I'm spending a lot of time. We haven't even gone inside yet, and I just, there's so much to talk about on this trailer. Uh, again, trying to maximize the storage where possible. One thing, one area to look really cool. Dinette bases, this is underneath the dinette, all aluminum tubing, fully bead welded together, double bead welded, weld, weld, not just spot welded. I often, when you look underneath uh, a dinette in a trailer, they'll make everything else look good, but then when you take the cushions off, they have a thin little Luan panel for the cushion to sit on that will break. Um, and then when you pull that off, often the screws that they use, because it's typically wood sticks underneath a dinette, those screws go through and literally they countersink them into the wood and it cracks. So I encourage you, look underneath the dinette in a trailer that you're considering buying to see if you already have cracked wood sticks underneath your dinette. Often people aren't looking at that. So again, Ember going the extra step. The other thing, the, the bed bases in the Ember trailers are all aluminum framed just like this. The other cool thing, they actually put a light here. Who would have thunk? And a 110 plug that will be wired up to your 2000 watt inverter. So if you're dry camping and you wanna use this as kind of like an area where you charge your power tools or whatever, they got the plug there for you. Beautiful. Now uh, the other thing, on the back side of the fridge, because we're not limited anymore with the gas electric fridges. Right? Gas electric fridges needed vents on the outside of the trailer for cooling purposes. We don't need that anymore. The 12 volt fridges are far, far more efficient, right? So why not utilize, spend the money, again, all composite here, here, composite, composite floor, right? You can put fishing poles in here, taller items, pool noodles, whatever. Um, but they, they're, they're giving you added storage. They're not just giving you what's up front. They're putting it here, they're putting it here. And then there's another compartment on the other side, on the back side of the trailer that's really cool as well. So, but again, super thick doors, metal latches, unbelievable. I love it. Dual pane acrylic windows, European style. They're putting it in all of their trailers, the Overland, the Touring Edition. Um, they louver outwards, as you can see. On the inside of the trailer, I will show you, they have an integrated screen and then blackout shade with a foil solar reflective to reflect heat away on the, on the blackout portion of the shade, which is really, really cool. But you can see how wide that window opens. We like it because if you're inside the trailer, maybe on the kitchen side, you can pass items out the window without having to open up your entrance door, which is kind of cool. But maximum ventilation, louver, jealousy style windows, so you can open up the window when it's raining and you don't have to worry about you know, a lot of moisture coming in. You can have it cracked a little bit. Uh, and then there's a vent feature with the latches that will actually latch the window just open like half an inch for ventilation without, you know, critters potentially working their way in. So here's that sensor for the CUB, Cub, Lane Change Assist. But again, look at the heavy steel that they're using here, friends. All the way up, thick corner moldings, a header plate that goes across the top at the back of the trailer, marrying in the sidewall, the rear wall and the roof to what? Reduce deflection and twisting in your trailer. Why is that important? Your cabinetry is not going to come apart on you. Corner moldings aren't going to pull away because, you know, this trailer is just properly put together, which is cool. Um, you've got underneath the trailer, Lippert quick drop jacks. 
the amount of travel that you have with this leg, because this inner sleeve here, there's a little hammer here that you can pull. There's some adjustment slots there. There is a ton of travel with this jack. So if you're camping in a spot where this back corner of the trailer, the ground drops off, you've got a ton more travel that you can utilize with this jack. And you can use a power drill on it. It actually comes with an attachment to put in a power drill with the trailer. Your typical scissor jacks, they actually recommend you don't use a power drill, just so you know, be aware of that. Um, two inch receiver, welded on for what? A bike rack, 300 pound rating. We're talking to a lot of people, the e-bikes have really taken off. They are heavier. So you can put a proper bike rack in that two inch receiver, store your e-bikes at the back or whatever, a storage tray, put a generator on it, whatever you want. Again, there's that spare tire mounted, easy access. It's not hanging underneath the trailer where it's hard to get to. Again, added to your storage, friends, rear hatch. Um, this will run up the middle of the trailer. If you got a kayak you wanna run up here, this is the lower part of the bunk bed, by the way. Uh, but I wanna show you something here, okay? This is the bed base right here of the bunk. See how thick that is? All aluminum tubing, fully bead welded together very very strong a lot of products friends when you look underneath the bunk bed it's just a sheet of plywood or OSB um, often it's warped or they have several different panels um, this bed base is gonna stay true and flat for the lifetime of the trailer and they've got a proper latch here so again they're giving you more storage but building that structure into the trailer which is really good so Lippert on the go ladder, a little different than your conventional RV ladder, friends. It makes getting up and down the trailer on the roof so much nicer. I can tell you the transition, like you could imagine if it had a regular RV ladder on it. Like you've got a two foot, three foot step to the bumper and then the ladder would start. And then that ladder sits flat about like this, right? So it's straight up and down. Having a ladder on the back of a trailer is a beautiful thing. It means you've got a walk on roof most likely. But with Ember, they're giving you more value, more usability by offering the on the go ladder that you can actually unhook and utilize in other areas in your campsite. Kind of weird, hey? Also, it makes getting up and down the trailer so much nicer, safer. I would never try to climb up. I do a lot, I shoot the videos of the, for the trailers. You guys have seen them, right? I climb up the roof, but I turn the camera off to make sure I'm using both my hands. These guys, because it's the way that it is, I'm gonna climb up the roof of this trailer right now. I feel totally safe. I'm gonna go up here. I just wanna show you how flat this roof membrane lays. It's a PVC roof membrane with a lifetime warranty. Nobody in the industry touches this, friends. Yes, I just said that. It's Tough Flex PVC by Dicor. Dicor is a leader in the RV industry for uh, coatings, for products like this. They also manufacture TPO as well, which is commonly used on a lot of the trailers as well, which will give you a 15, 16, 17, 18 year warranty, whatever they choose to put on it. Um, but this is a PVC roof membrane. Um, the flexibility and strength that's in PVC is far superior. That's why they can offer a lifetime warranty on this product by Dicor. It's a branded product. They use the Dicor lap sealant around all of the vents and whatnot. Also, the roof construction that's on this has an unbelievable thermal barrier. It's not a laminated roof. Okay, friends, be very careful of laminated roofs in the industry. They don't breathe very well. If you're camping in cooler weather, you have a possibility of having condensation build up inside your trailer if you don't open the vents and turn on the fans in the trailer, which will actually remove the heat from your trailer, okay? This is a, a common roof construction that some of the manufacturers use, but not that common. It's a 16 inch on center wood truss. It's pitched, not as steep of your house, but very similar. Um, and these guys go the extra step. It's actually a four by eight sheet of tongue and groove plywood. Not OSB, plywood, tongue and groove. Like you can't really see any of the seams. Typically in a trailer that would have just a butt seam where the two pieces just marry together but don't group, uh, interlock together, you will see that seam. 
Okay, this is a very, very strong roof. Like I've walked up and down a lot of the roofs in the industry showing videos this, there's not a ton of flex beneath my feet. Be careful when you go look at other trailers, walk up on the roof, I encourage you. Some of them super flex beneath your feet, they call them a walk on roof. And sometimes if there isn't even a ladder on the back of the trailer, it means you don't even have a walk on roof. It's just a thin plywood or sorry, luon paneling that they put up on top. So Ember, again, better ownership experience. They're giving you the ability to access the roof, sweep off the top of your slide. Now, I don't have the benefit to show you what the slide roof looks like, but they actually have, it's a fiberglass panel. There's no uh, membrane on top of the slide. It's laminated with fiberglass, just like your sidewall is, full walk-on. I was walking on it when I came up here prior to shooting the video, just to see what was going on up here. And I walked across the top of the slide, fully laminated block foam. Um, aluminum framed, fully welded together, very, very strong. Okay, there's your two solar panels, both 200 watts, 400 watts total. You have the WineGuard AR Air 360 Plus. It's got the pre prep, so if you want to add the gateway device, you totally can do that. Coleman Mock Air Conditioner, um, 15,000 BTUs. Also, all the vents in the Touring Edition, friends, have the big, massive fan in them. So your kitchen has a massive fan, as well as your bathroom. So on those super, super hot days, you're dry camping, maybe you don't have a generator to run your air conditioner, you crack both those fans and those Euro acrylic dual pane windows, and you will get a beautiful airflow through your trailer, keeping it cool, which is nice. The beautiful thing about the roof in this trailer, having the thermal barrier that it has, um, is you don't have to open up the vents uh, in the trailer when it's cooler out to get the moisture out because the roof, the, the type of roof that's in this trailer allows the trailer to breathe. Uh, it's not, there's not aluminum tubing up here. There's not steel stamp trusses that you find in some of the products that can corrode over time. Moisture building up inside the roof, those sorts of things. So again, these particular guys, they're doing the, a beautiful roof on this trailer for cooler weather, hotter weather allows the trailer to stay cooler uh, in the hot, hot weather as well. So, uh, lots of vents. These are the siphon, 360 siphon vents for your holding tanks, okay? Um, what that does is it's an upgraded uh, vent that is attached to the holding tanks in the underbelly of your trailer. And so what's nice about it is it won't allow the air, the wind from outside, to push back down into the tank, releasing that nasty smell back inside your trailer. Okay, this particular vent, which is an upgrade, I don't know how many manufacturers are putting it on. I would be safe to say probably none, not very many, Ember for sure, because we're looking at it. Um, they just don't want your trailer stinking on you. So kind of cool, right? Again, skylight above your shower. So I know I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. I'm giving you guys a ton of video. This video is going to be super long. Oh, one thing I forgot to touch, talk on is this has the Stargazer skylight. Hey Alex, how you doing buddy? Hey, there's Alex, one of our newest sales associates. Hey. He's learning. Learning from the best. You're gonna be world famous, buddy. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so Stargazer Skylight, friends, this is again, dual pane acrylic window. It folds down, it has the screen, it has the vent, beautiful thing. I actually used an Ember Overland this last summer with the Stargazer Skylight, and stargazing is a really real thing. I'm gonna say it. I laid in bed while my son slept in the bunk beds. I looked out, out, out at the stars. This is a true story. And I actually stargazed and I thought about life. It was a beautiful thing. We had an amazing camping trip. Thank you, Ember, for putting in a stargazer skylight. We love it. Uh, unlike the front windshields that are, they're just a windshield, right? Potential leak point, uh, potential for breaking from a rock, those sorts of things. So, oh my goodness, that's so far down. How are we gonna get down? Well, should I attempt it one-handed holding a camera? I'm dangerous, I'm dangerous. Here we go. We're going around, boom. I would never, ever, ever attempt to do that with a regular ladder on the back of an RV. So, and I'm still a pretty young guy, I think, 40 years old, right? Pretty nimble. Well, what if you're like 70, right? Well, having a nice easy ladder to climb up on top of your roof to do your maintenance and sweep off the top of your slide and do those sorts of things. 
uh, is a beautiful thing. So again, look at the clearance underneath this trailer, friends. Boom. Unbelievable. These guys do such a good job. We'll get close. We're not afraid to show it. Fantastic. All right, campsite, campsite. I know you guys are gonna beat me up for not even being inside the trailer yet because you guys like doing that. Some of you, some of you people are actually very kind and uh, supportive on the videos and how deep we go. But again, campsite of your trailer, very important. Dual entries, one into your master bedroom, one into your living area. Um, outdoor kitchen covered by the awning. I love this, I love this. I seen it, I, I used it this summer in the Ember, the 221 MDB. Beautiful workbench for meal prep. If you gotta do work on a specific item that maybe you're doing a repair on or whatever, uh, maybe not with the trailer, or you're just doing something with prep and you need a workbench to stand at, absolutely beautiful. This has the best cooking surface that I've ever used in a trailer. Um, it's massive, it has a proper grease drip in it. Um, like you can do a full thing of bacon, a whole, you know, a dozen eggs on here. It, you know, you scrape it over, you season it just like a cast iron uh, frying pan and you can scrape the grease over to here. It cleans up really well. The grease drips down into this little tray. I can't speak highly enough about this griddle cooktop uh, for preparing a big breakfast for family or cooking steaks, hamburgers, hot dogs, whatever the case is. And the beautiful thing, friends, is it tucks out of the way, revealing a beautiful workbench that's supported by steel straps. Um, and you can release it as well. If you want to fold it down flat, you just unhook these carabiners and it flips down flat. Um, again, with Ember being more off-grid, uh, they're building that technology in. Again, with the optional off-grid kit that we've got on this trailer, you can run this fridge right off your batteries, friends. So no need to have it as an ice box. You know, you put a really solid set of six volt batteries on the front of this trailer um, and the 400 watts of solar, you're gonna run that fridge, no problem. Uh, added powder coated steel tabletop with the amber light and the 110 plug. Every 110 plug in this trailer, friends, is wired to the inverter as well. So pure sine wave, clean, clean power. 30 inch wide entrance door, um, makes carrying the laundry hamper in without wrapping the knuckles off the side of the, the door frame so much nicer. They're all about solid steps. So you got the fold in solid step there, okay? And then they've got the regular conventional step here for the, for the bedroom, but then they put the solid stance underneath. Again, friends, we've talked about in trailers, you know, some manufacturers bolt the value on, but they don't build it in. Some build it in, but they don't bolt it on. You follow? These guys bolt it on and build it in. You get the complete package. You spend a lot of money on a trailer, friends. Ember has weeded out. They're not gonna be perfect, okay? There's gonna be things we have to work through under warranty, right? They're built by people, we're not perfect. Um, but they're doing a lot of the things right. When I talked to Chris, uh, Chris Barth, their VP, I kept hearing one word and that word was correct or correctness, if that's actually a word. I don't know, I'm not an English major, forgive me, I'm a human. Um, correct, okay, they're going the extra step, they're thinking about the manufacturing of the trailer to enhance the ownership experience, bringing you better value for the lifetime of the trailer. Warranty, one, two, three, warranty. Um, one year on your um, materials and workmanship, Two year on your appliances, three year structure. Really simple, uh, but very robust warranty. One thing that people often overlook, we talk about, what is that? That's a hood fan vent. A lot of products, friends, they don't even put hood fan vents in. They just recirculate the hood fan air back inside the trailer. Ember puts it in, pump that out. You could actually use that to help exhaust the heat out of your trailer if you wanted to. There's that acrylic window that flips out that I said you could maybe pass some items in and out of the window without having to open up the big door potentially to let bugs in and there's a screen that you just drop down um, to keep the bugs out if you want to leave the window open which is cool um, pressurized water on the entry side of your trailer 110 plug there's just so much to talk about this is going to be a huge video i'm sorry and for those of you that decide to hang in with me without beating me up i appreciate you we're going to go inside I'm gonna open up the slide here in a second, but I wanted to show you. Okay, there's the cable system. It's all protected in this casement. 
that runs vertically on both sides. There's a motor here, there's a motor on the other side. Okay, the adjustment, you can see the adjustment feature, you just tighten this up right here, boom, boom, right? And you can take the slack out of your cable as it, as it stretches. Things like this, these guys do, okay? It's not just a batten strip made out of Luan plywood with a veneer on it with a staple that goes through it. The staple, you'll see this everywhere in trailers, friends. They will do batten strips to seal in here, okay? The problem is that at the factory, they like to dial up the air pressure for some reason, and they pump the staple all the way through the batten strips. And that's why when you go to a lot of dealers and you look at trailers that maybe haven't been through their, their uh, shop yet, you see batten strips hanging down everywhere. Okay, these guys, this is actually a cap. It's not a batten strip, it's a ABS cap that's color matched, pattern matched. Like you wouldn't even see it if I was, wasn't pointing it out. It's right here. See it? Okay, they're using the outer slide cap to hold it on and they've attached it properly, but that won't come off ever. All the way along here. It's no batten, no batten, okay? It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful, but again, the adjustment that you have with the slide box on this is fantastic. It's a massive upgrade from the previous cable slide systems. I'm pretty sure they're still being used. I don't, can't quantify that because we don't carry anything with that type of slide system. This is the only product that we carry, Ember, that's using this new uh, Bow by Norco exact slide system. So we're just gonna move the slide out, push it down. You can get this in flush floor uh, varieties as well so the uh, slide drops right down um, but look at how nice that dinette is there's no leg attached to the floor of the slide that you're gonna have to worry about kicking out or deal with there's a lot of flexibility with this dinette tabletop as well so you know if you want to move this around get it out of the way you could totally do it you could remove it use it as a just a lounge area, um, fold it down into a bed, makes into a great big bed as well. So really, really nice dinette. I like these little things too. They put a, a cap, aluminum cap right on the edge of the dinette just to finish it off, right with the Ember logo, laser cut into it. It's the little things these guys are doing that go the extra step, right? Again, all composite Asdale. This is a thicker gauge, a much thicker Asdale than what you would typically find. Um, well, you won't really find it in the inside walls of trailers, to be honest with you. Usually it's just, they'll do Asdale on the main walls and then they'll do Luan plywood on the inside. These guys, everywhere you see this pattern is all Asdale. But look how thick that bed base is. Super, super thick. Mattress drops down with the window, right? Beautiful bunk area individual curtains with the ladder and then an amazing closet right here at your front door shelving you can put brooms in here dad when he's bad uh, light dimmers so if you want to dim the lights for at night the other thing they put an individual button on the light itself so let's say you put the little ones to bed and you still want to have a little bit of light in your living area you can isolate and turn all these lights off individually right make it a little darker for the kids but then have this light on on a dimmer just so that at night when you come in you can turn it on and uh, hit the fridge for your, your midnight snack so fireplace 5000 BTU heater if you want set the ambiance Beautiful kitchen, flip up counter extension. Oh, the other thing under all the touring edition kitchen sinks, storage for a, I think a five gallon trash receptacle. Most often you don't get that. Four drawers, five drawers actually. You just make it look like an oven, regular oven, right? Like look at the storage in here, it's fantastic. <clears throat> Enough said. All right. Um, 10 cubic foot GE, 12 volt refrigerator. Again, it's gigantic. 
It'll run right off your batteries. Beautiful. It's deep. It's larger than a gas absorption fridge and uh, super quiet. Um, we're going to jump into the bathroom. I know I'm dancing all over the place here, but beautiful, beautiful bathrooms. Towel rack, roll your towels up, stack them in here. Porcelain foot flush toilet. Uh, you have a shower miser in here, right there. So that blue pipe, you turn this valve here. If you're dry camping, and it'll resert the water back through the faucet to the fresh water tank. Um, and once this turns milky white, you know that you have warmer water. You're not wasting water, blending it, filling up your gray tank. Your gray tank for your bathroom is 35 gallons, and then you've got a separate gray tank for your kitchen for 35 gallons. So total water, gray water capacity is 70 gallons on this trailer. There's your great big max fan with rain sensor. So beautiful, beautiful fan. There's the ventilation for your trailer. There's the nightshade if you want. On the back is that solar reflective material. And then there's your screen for bugs. So, but look at this, look at the vanity in this trailer. It's all backlit, amazing sink, beautiful styling, lots of storage. They're really thinking of the user. You know, even the light is in a track, so it's not just mounted to the side of the box, blinding you when you turn it on. They actually point it away from you, so it's backlit nicely, and you can utilize this great big, like, look at the vanity in here. It's huge. Look how deep that is. That's like almost half my arm depth. Unbelievable. Amber light, light switches, believe it or not. Yes, light switches in a bathroom. How often do we have to st have our kids stand on the toilet to turn the light off and on to use the toilet at night? Lots of times. Well, not in an amber. That light right there, you can turn on and off. The amber light, you can leave it on at night for a night light, all switches. Go count the switches in any bathroom in an RV. You won't find four in a travel trailer. And again, 110 plug wired up to your 2000 watt inverter. So, you know, you don't have to worry. If you want to blow dry your hair, blow dry your hair uh, if you're dry camping. So, max fan there. That's the remote for that one. Again, rain, rain, uh, rain sensor as well in your kitchen. Like, look at the storage here. Ember. Beautiful. Solid wood doors, lumber core cabinetry. Um, I know I'm missing a bunch of stuff inside because I gave it all to you on the outside. Pocket door. This is your bedroom with the Stargazer skylight storage across the top. Hanging storage on either side with a drawer. You got the little, little cubbies. With amber lights, 110 plugs behind here on this wall here. I won't, can't reach around. USB plug as well. So if you have a CPAP machine or two CPAP machines, you can plug it in. Residential size bed, 60 wide by 80 long, full queen. Okay. So if you don't like the mattress, go to any mattress store and uh, get, the, get a new mattress if you want. Um, but one thing to show you, underneath aluminum framed bed bases, plywood, and then the, the, the bed top, like this right now, is not just a piece of wood, okay? It's actually a laminated panel. But look at the extra step that they go. They put the caps on the corners. Like, look how strong that is. Unbelievable. All right. And then you've got the little storage cubby here. Well, a closet. I'll just stand back show you. I'm not one for the camera, so. Mirrored door three more drawers so you got five drawers in your bath in your bedroom area alone for goodies soft clothes now yes it's not a deep closet i get it hang your jackets there little summer coats or whatever they give you something but you got a storage top up here all the pl plugins you can plug in a 12 volt tv if you want they give you that because the tv in the living area is 12 volt i forgot to say or if you want to hang just a conventional 110 TV, you can do that too. All the backing is there to support the, uh, the TV. So I know I've, I've given you a ton. I hope the next one, this is the first touring edition I've shot. Usually the first video is super long. Oh, Ember Link. You can connect to your trailer Bluetooth style, operate the, the awning, the slide, and the lights. 
through Bluetooth on your phone. Um, and uh, you can see all your tank monitors and lights and all sorts of stuff, switches for your hot water heater, dimmer switch, all the gear. Um, what else? What else can I tell you? Hey, we're Woody's RV World. Top 50 dealer in North America since the award's inception. And uh, we work hard for our customers. We're brick and mortar. We only play in the RV space. We're pros at it. We've got dealers throughout Western Canada, eight to be exact. And we are an Ember dealer at all but one. Um, so a beautiful service network, carrying a beautiful value-based built product supported by a value-based selling dealership, RV dealership group. So if you wanna come by, we would love to host you at our dealership, tell you more about Ember, do your research, check it out. Um, what more can I say other than be safe, be kind, and enjoy life. Hit the open road and uh, make memories that last a lifetime. My name's Clayton Phillips. I'm the sales manager here at Woody's RV in Leduc. And this is a Ember Touring Edition 24 BH with Max Solar and all the extra stuff that we just talked about and bored you to death with. Not really though. Lots of info. We love you. Take care. Be safe.